Hi everyone, Dr. Mac again with another video today. Today's video is all about giving you a basic understanding of the rubber dam task. I get a lot of queries, a lot of questions regarding sheet selection, clamp selection, the basic outline, the planning. Now, I do help dentists around the globe and dental students with my online short courses and comprehensive courses for the foreign trained dentist exams. Uh, I will share the link below in the description of the video. In my detailed comprehensive technical course, I do have technical OSCE se sessions as well, in which I have eight videos for my rubber dam course, which basically explains you, outlines you in detail about the basics, the foundation of using rubber dam, which clamps to use, how to plan your cases, and showing you every single place on the model so you get the basic outline and everything is nice and clean for you. But today's video, I thought I'll share the first video of my rubber dam course with everyone, just so everybody can get a bit of a basic outline and a bit of a basic understanding when they're dealing with rubber dam tasks. So hope this video is helpful for everyone. Do share your feedback with us in the comments below and we'll keep sharing some useful information with everyone. Hi everyone, uh, and welcome to the rubber dam class today. A uh, lot of confusions, people trying to do, again, whenever you get confused, focus on the 380 laws that I created. Basics, you're not here to impress anyone, just focus on passing the exam. So whenever we see all these clamps right there, when we get confused, we won't be using all of them. I want you to focus just on five clamps and that is it. Don't worry about these other fancy looking um, rubber dam sheets, okay? We just focus on this purple one. We get in the exam, okay? The description of all these, which the name of the sheet and all that will post it for you so you don't have to worry about it, okay? So we need to focus on five clamps. We need to focus on the basics and it just works every single time. Less stress, okay? So first thing what you need to understand is what is a winged clamp and what is a non-winged clamp or we call it the wingless clamp. Now look at this clamp here. If you notice, is a clamp here. There's no wing on the side. Comparing it to this one, it has a wing here on the side. So this is a wing clamp. It has two wings on the side. Okay, so it rests on it. Now the advantage of a winged clamp is that you can assemble everything outside. And once you've assembled all your rubber dam, we just need to place it in the mouth or on your mannequin, it becomes a lot easier. With a winged lamp, uh, wingless clamp, because you cannot do this, you basically have to apply this first in the mouth and then you follow it with the sheet on top. And that's how a lot of people do, even in clinical life as well, okay? Either some people do the clamp first on the tooth and then apply the sheet on top, or they put the sheet like this first after the punches and apply the clamp on top like that because they don't have the wings to hold it. Either way, whichever works for you, either you assemble it outside or, you know, mix it up like inside the mouth, like clamp first or sheet first and clamp on top. It's your choice. What I have seen is in ADC, if you're getting the winged clamp, then don't make your life difficult. Just do all the assembly outside, so you just place it in the mat. Now, when we talk about rubber dam, we will not be using all these clamps. Don't worry about all these clamps, okay? We will only be using five clamps, and I would really, like, you know, advise everybody to just worry about these five clamps. Don't worry about all these 200 clamps that we see, okay? The, the most important is, not the most important, but, the, there's one clamp called as a 13A and 12A clamp. The note, if you notice, 
The reason why they call 12A or 13A is if this is your first quadrant, the 12A goes on your first quadrant, 13A goes on the second quadrant. And if you notice on these clamps, what will you see is there's a bit of a big cravings on the one side and this small on the other side. So this basically tells us this is for the upper clamp. Now the same as with forceps, the right and left is different. The same with 13 and 12 way is different. If you notice the buckle, the big one goes on the buckle. Now how to know which clamp is which, always remember this big thing that you see, that always stays on the distal. Now, when I say this thing stays on the distal, now this is my demarcation. If I say that's the first quadrant, this one, and if I would place it like this, the 12A, the buckle portion is coming on the palatal. That means this is for the second quadrant, not the first quadrant. So if I hold it like this, hold my clamp, it just fits in just like this, okay? So the big one on the buckle, small one on the palatal, because that's how the upper tooth is, it's smallly on the palatal, one root. And then buckle have two roots, means your buckle, this to buckle, so that it goes like this. Same, same way, if we're talking about 13A, 13A is for the first quadrant. So basically what we're doing is, just like that okay so the buckle big one goes on the buckle small one goes on the palatal so the upper teeth whenever you talk about upper teeth we want to look at 13a 12a these are the two clamps okay if we talk about anterior tooth and sometimes there's a front tooth and all that we need to talk about this clamp right there number six clamp and you go in like this now it also depends on the isolation protocol we want to know for what procedure are we doing it is it for an endo case is it for a filling is it for um, is it for something else so it depends on the procedure the rubber dam things change this as well okay so pointing out 13A for the first quadrant, 12A for the sec second quadrant, okay? And then we have this number six clamp for the anterior tooth, all right? And then very important, this clamp here, number four. Now with the lower teeth, you will notice that we have similar, you know, we have mesobuccal, mesolingual, distobuccal, distolingual, one distal, but the, because of similar roots, we have clamps like these that sink in really nicely. Again, the distal goes here, and then just on, on top. So that's why if we talk about lower teeth, the four clamp, can go either on this tooth, either on this tooth. We don't need to worry about the upper teeth. That's why the upper teeth have 13A and 12A. The lower one, number four, does the work for you. A lot of people like using, instead of four, they like using a seven or a seven A. Now the difference between whenever something says A to it, the dip difference between A is, that can you see the seven there? Look at, it's a wing clamp, but if you notice closely, it's flat. So the clamp, when it hits the tooth, it's very straight, right? That means it's good, but it's less retention. When I compare that with an activated clamp, which says 7A, 4A, 13A, whenever you see A on top, of that letter, that means it's an activated clamp and you look at it like this. That means this is activated now. So the hooks 
of the clamps are directed down, that means it's a bit more on the activation side. This is mostly for the clinical scenario when we have subgingival defects and we want to be more retention. In your case, either way works really well. But generally, if you have activated one, it's not a bad idea. The only disadvantage is because it's activated, they, 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 these are pointy, the clasp. So what it happens is sometimes it pierces through your dam. That's why sometimes a non-activated one is not a bad idea. However, when you work on it, as I said, you need 13A, you need 12A, you need number four, you need number six, four, and then we need one of these ones, double zero, for the premolar. That's pretty much it. If you work on these five ones, if you notice, Again, this is a non-activated, and you would notice the size of the premolar is smaller, that's why it's here. You can put it on a canine as well. You can put it on a premolar as well. So these, these are the clamps are well over. You don't need too many clamps. So don't worry about thousand clamps and all that. If you work on these clamps, you pretty much solve all the scenario, okay? Now, we need to, we need to work on the basics whenever there's an arch like this, okay? Arch like this. And someone's saying that, okay, now I have a case in which I have one teeth here, centrals, laterals, canine. Okay. This canine is big, this is small. Premolar, premolar, make it like a box so it's less confusing. And then we have a big molar here, okay? Now someone tells me, that and there's a second molar here, okay? Now someone says that you have an endo for lower six, four six. Ideally what we wanna do is whichever tooth you wanna isolate, if they say four six, then ideally you would like to put the clamp on the tooth behind it, one to distal to it. The reason for that is once you can visualize that tooth a bit better when you put that clamp on the same tooth the visualization is a bit difficult because you can stretch the dam a bit better like that okay rather than here and then this fold just comes on top second reason is just in case you put the clamp on this seven here and something breaks or you have a tear on it the isolation was meant to be done on six, not the seven. So we can just patch it up with a bit of a liquid dam or liquid rubber dam. And then it works well. So it's a bit of a safety measure as well. So on a rule of thumb, you want to always say that if you're talking about any two, talking about three, six, then you will try to do one teeth on the distal. If you're talking about canine, then we're talking one tooth on the distal. If you're talking about the front tooth, then ideally to stabilize the dam, otherwise your dam will not be stable, what you should be doing is bring it up till the canine. So if I have a central incisor, I would bring it from canine to canine to make the rubber dam stable. If they're telling me to do a four, five, this one, then I would ideally put the clamp on the six and then I can isolate three teeth. One on mesial, one on distal, and this is the tooth that I'm working on, but my clamp goes on the distal. So even if there's a pair to it or there's an opening to it, it's not affecting my working site. That's how it works basically, okay? Now, the only difference to this scenario is that you want to cross the midline on the anterior tooth to make it stable you want to go distal to the side in front to have a better visualization and just to have a preventative as well that you know just in case it breaks or has a pierce to it your working side is not affected endodontic excess protocol so if they say we have a do an endo on one tooth which is Two one, then you can just put a clamp on this tooth only and it works. 
if they say you have a endo on four six then instead of doing three teeth you can only do one teeth and it's gonna be fine okay so normal protocol what we want to do is for anterior tooth we want to cross the midline to make this stable otherwise you'll notice a lot of people do this and the dam is like this this bended half bended like this so you want to make sure it fits on the face so it's not too much stretch on one side number two is whichever tooth you want to do we want to have a tooth in front and have a tooth behind it so we basically try to do three teeth as a pair and then the clamp goes on the further back tooth which is the distal so your sight is this you have one tooth in in front one tooth at the back and then this covers it so basically that's how it is the only difference to this is if you're doing an endodontic axis that's the only time it changes okay let's talk about the placement of rubber damper 